first thing you need to do is head over to your local courthouse and ask for these documents called the Firearms Restraining Order. Hundreds marched with the Rockford Mayor Thomas McNamara to bring awareness to domestic violence. I spoke with many people who have been affected in one way or another, and many who marched today are so excited to see the city taking a step in the right direction. Earlier today were dozens of squad cars on both sides of the highway. The scene is just heartbreaking, and what's left is the bare remnants of a tragedy that happened just hours ago. Our project focuses on tearing down the parking lot that was previously in this spot and building a much larger one. I spoke with a few students who say this was unlike anything they'd ever seen before. They heard multiple gunshots. They saw people running out of the building and they watched police handle large rifles. And the big topic of conversation tonight is the odor coming from that Winnebago County landfill. Now Dave Kelly, a board member, says that talk needs to start now about the ordinance regarding its operations. Now this ordinance has not been updated since the 1960s when the county was the owners of that landfill. Brian Robb received a call from a neighbor that nobody ever wants to hear. The barn which holds his livestock was up in flames and starting to crumble. According to Jewish leaders, there are around 600 Jewish people in the city. And after this morning's shooting, many were concerned that this might impact those living in our area. Kennels that used to be in this location only measured right here at three feet tall. Well, now with this new renovation, they stretch all the way up to six feet tall, making it much easier for employees to do their jobs. TSA officers talked extensively about the items that they see passengers try to sneak through security, such as knives disguised as lipstick, keys, and hairbrushes, things officers can easily detect. The most important thing to remember when you're outside in super hot weather is to drink water. Yes, Mike and Shannon, I am here at the Sickle gas station off of 11th Street here in Rockford. Right now, what we do know is that the man who was the 30-year-old victim who was stabbed in the neck he did arrive at the hospital and police are saying he does have potentially life threatening injuries. After speaking with many motorcycle riders, they say driving on grass clippings can be just as slippery as ice, causing many motorcycle accidents. Close friends and family came together with balloons, flowers and candles, not just to celebrate Mother's Day, but to celebrate Zachary's son Shaquille's 24th birthday. Now each of these machines cost $25, but with this new legislation that can go up to $250. In June of 2018, the city of Rockford was forced to file a lawsuit against A.W. Bennett, the company which owns Essex, because they wouldn't demolish the blighted property after the city asked multiple times. Right, Mike and Shannon, I'm here in the 600 block of Stevenson Street, which is just down the road from where Fort's body was found. Police say that there was an incident at this location that is a part of their investigation in to Fort's death. Life-saving skills were put to the test at the first responders from multiple agencies responded to this mock airplane crash involving 150 volunteers acting as passengers. A nationwide organization called Fight Crime Investing Kids has found that children who have high quality education in preschool are more likely to stay out of trouble. Real that they're tearing it down. It's a little saddening. It really hurts me that they're tearing down all these these old beautiful buildings. After 123 years, the Kishwaukee Elementary School building is coming down. But many community members say the memories made will never be forgotten. Recess time, when they used to uh, make the big snow plows back in the back, we used to play uh, King of the Mountains back there in big snowball fights. Johnny Rucker attended Kishwaukee School in the 80s. That's right there. I guess it was the office now that they just tore down, but that used to be my pre-kindergarten uh, pre class. Rucker says he's not surprised the school is being demolished, given the condition it's in. And the kids nowadays need air conditioning and stuff like that, and that school probably didn't have it. Others believe it's a waste to remove the school completely. Even if you don't use it as a school, you can always use it as something else. Um, either homes for the homeless or you can do tutoring there of different grades. Rockford Public Schools 205 says the space will turn into a playground and parking lot for Constance Lane Elementary School, where kids from Kishwaukee, Nelson and a portion of Byer will attend starting this fall. Growing up around this area, a lot done changed. A lot of houses are gone now, so I guess it's a new beginning. In Rockford, Brittany Carlin, 23 News. The reason I'm still here today is because of the outcome and because of the people. One year ago, Dixon High School principal Michael Grady was getting ready for graduation practice when the unthinkable happened. I heard some shots, had one of my faculty members 
yell in, this is that we have an active shooter, and I yelled at the students to get out. They ran out to the north. I saw Officer Dallas leave through the south doors. School resource officer Mark Dallas confronted the accused shooter, Matthew Milby, shooting him in the shoulder and preventing anyone else from getting hurt. An excellent response from our Dixon Police Department, from the Lee County Police Department, from the state police. 92 seconds later, we were safe. Students say the extensive shooter training they had been through prior to the incident allowed them to stay calm and get out safely. It kind of like makes you think of those situations and what you would do and prepares you for whatever might happen. Over the last year, Dixon High School has implemented new safety precautions. You can only enter through the secure vestibule so that we check everybody in. We have 120 extra cameras and we do have an increased police presence in and around the school. You're not worried about it happening again because every shooting incident most of the time is isolated. So like I wasn't worried about it and then security all around the school has been stepped up. In Dixon, Brittany Carlin, 23 News. I was afraid that that guy was going to come escape from the cops, come running through the subdivisions looking for an unlocked door. Debbie Heyer immediately locked her doors and shut the garage out of fear and to stay safe. It's pretty scary. It's just right around the corner, you know. Heyer is a caretaker in the neighborhood across the street from Extended Stay America and never saw this coming. You just don't go out and think like something around the corner, you know, is going to be terrifying. Jessica Banks works at Dental Designers and feels the same way. That was shocking, yeah. We don't see nothing like that over here. Ever so, yeah, it was a scary thing. Bang says within minutes the street filled with cop cars. A patient here at the time, um, he got here right before it happened, and then they were kind of a little bit scared. And then patients started calling, canceling, saying the roads were blocked off, they couldn't get in, things like that. After seeing all the police, Banks turned on the TV to stay updated and keep the patients calm. It was definitely scary. You know, we don't know where he's at or what's going on. We're right across the street, so. He could have came in here or anywhere. In Rockford, Brittany Carlin, 23 News. Illinois is the first state to legalize recreational marijuana through the legislative process rather than a ballot vote. In tonight's I-Team report, Working for Weed, 23 News reporter Brittany Carlin takes a look at how this new law will impact company policies. I've been personally let go from a job for failing a drug test. After being laid off from his factory job in McChesney Park, Ryan Warren was eager to return. And then when I came back to work, uh, there was a, a, re, a retest for, for employees that had been laid off, and I did not know that that was going to happen. His test indicated marijuana in his system, and the company let him go. Warren doesn't think it was right. It is one of the drugs that stays in your system longer, but that doesn't always indicate impairment. Um, you could have used, you know, three weeks prior and still test positive three weeks later. Testing for marijuana and revising current work policies is now a big topic of conversation among employers, especially in Illinois, which will legalize marijuana use on January 1st. It's very important that we communicate, review and revise those policies. Alpha Controls and Services is an engineering company that currently has a zero tolerance policy. We have uh, random drug testing and then if we would have an incident, we've got a whole um, policy to go through working with that employee to give them an opportunity to uh, remedy the situation. Owner Frank Rotello is looking into making some changes. We value our employees, they're a number one asset. So. All of these things revolve around how we deal with our employees, and especially in today's world where you're trying to attract and retain talent, you've really got to look, look for the best interests of your employees. Since many of Rotello's employees are at job sites assisting customers and using company vehicles, he believes continuing with a policy similar to his current one might be best. Making sure we're in compliance, uh, not only for the safety of our employees, but also overall cost of implementing the new policies on our workers' comp and other things. The big issue here is how do you balance the Illinois law, which allows an employee to use a lawful product like marijuana outside of working hours, and the law which says that an employee can, employer cannot discriminate against an employee because of the use of those products versus the employer's right to have policies and to maintain a drug-free workplace. Attorney Jim Paragis focuses his practice on employers and fields countless questions concerning the new recreational marijuana law. And this kind of law 
which now calls into question what, you know, what can you test someone for? What, you know, what, when can you take action against someone who uses what is now a lawful product? has really kind of put some questions into, you know, how do I manage these risks? Paredes says the best thing employers can do is be very specific when updating their policy. This next six months that we have until this law becomes effective to review those policies, to review its practices on drug free workplaces, on drug testing. And once that's done, Paredes says training is the next step. Train our supervisors, you know, what kinds of conduct should they be, uh, be on the lookout for in determining whether or not someone might be impaired or under the influence. It's exactly what would have helped Warren keep his job. So I wasn't a bad employee at all. I was probably one of a model, like a model employee uh, there. Um, but that one little thing was, was a deal breaker for them. Warren believes everything happens for a reason, and failing that drug test brought him to Maple Glen Care Center, where he helps people find the right strand of medical marijuana to ease their symptoms. I'm sure I help people in some way or another, but this I have more of a hands-on, face-to-face uh, -face helping with people, and that's that's what I'm, I love. I really, really do. For the 23 News I team, I'm Brittany Carlin. Now, once January hits, anyone 21 or older can possess up to 30 grams of cannabis, and anyone visiting Illinois can possess up to 15 grams of marijuana.